Now Jesus is very clear, isn't it? Stop worrying because it does you no good. Stop worrying. Now, perhaps that relates directly to our personal experience. Some of us could win Nobel Prize for worrying if there is one. Any candidates? <laughs> I have one. I got one more too. Okay, but we do worry about lot of things, lot of things, and lot of and so many ways. Now I even worried about my sermon today. So I was worried. Jesus says, "Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your lifespan? <coughs> if anything." The stress probably shortens our lives. Does worrying get you nice clothes, or better food, or more drink? No. In fact, he says the birds of the air are clothed better, are fed better than you, and they, the flowers are better clothed than all of us. Now. There are several categories of excuses for worrying. The first category is worrying about things that are not important. This would include who will win the Oscar today, <laughs> and who is going to win the best direction, best sound direction for for foreign language documentary. Well, the things that are not in, are not important include how my hair looks, whether the towels are folded neatly. Sad dilemma for worries is that we convince ourselves that these these things are really important, and if something comes along that shows us how unimportant they are. Thirty-five years ago, I was in the seminary with them. A seminary, you want to approve us? He became a priest. He had a big trunk of hair, and he used to put it very stylishly. I used to admire him, and I wanted my hair to be like that. <laughs> But last September, I met him. I got a chance to meet him. He became a bishop. So I said, okay, I'm going to meet him after 35 years. So he must be looking very nice now. I went in. I saw a bald man sitting there. I said, "What happened to your hair? Beautiful hair." I lost all my hair by worrying about being a bishop. See, very important hair, and you should I put it this way, put it this way, or boy it in style? Doesn't matter at all. Now I got no problem with it. My dear brothers and sisters, so we can laugh at ourselves, thinking how many times we have worried about things which are not at all relevant or important. Now, the second category, we worry about future. Is there anyone who is not worried about the future? If there, if there is someone who is not worried about the future, you can raise your hand. No, but. See, I'm talking to the right persons. We worry about the future. It is a now. It is a silly idea that if we worry about something long enough and hard enough, it will actually change how things turn out. That if I worry, it changes the outcome to the result I want. So, what do we worry about? We worry about an exam. I will get a better grade if I worry about it. Is it true? No. If I worry about the job interview, it will turn out well. True? No. If I worry about my bills, then I will have enough money to pay all of them. True? No. 
It is magical thinking, but our worry does not affect the future. Now, the third category is about the past. About the past things we worry about. Now, this means worrying about what I did or what I could have done or I should have done. Now, this causes us to worry because we see the consequences of our actions unfolding now. And so we actually worry even though now it is too late. We still worry. I should have done that. I shouldn't have done that. We worry about that, right? Oh, I was stupid. <coughs> oh, I was naive. Oh, I didn't think about it. We worry about that. So, as I get ready to go to the dentist for my annual checkup, I worry about whether I floss and brushed my teeth enough. As I get ready for my final exam, this applies to all the young boys and girls, I worry about whether I should have studied for the past two weeks instead of playing video games. <laughs> Worrying does not change the past or its consequences. Now Jesus points out to something else which worries us because I don't have faith in her. I worry God does not love me. I worry God won't forgive me. I worry God has abandoned me. I does not even know who I am. I says words today's first reading is the answer. Can a mother forget the child of her womb? If even if he forgets, I will not forget you. Know. Clear, right? Now, Jesus says, well, we worry too much about wrong things. Not the right thing. We worry about clothes. Instead of caring for our bodies. Which are much more important. We worry about the sins of our past. Rather than doing what is necessary for eternal life. Oh, I committed all this sin. Oh my God, what am I going to do? We worry about that. Instead of worrying about, okay, from now what am I going to do? To go to eternal life. We worry, we worry about our next meal instead of planning how we will grow in holiness. Some people are very obsessive compulsive, especially some of the good ladies here. Very obsessed with what to prepare and how to prepare and how to present it. All these things. Stop gathering and start giving away. I am realizing that. I have accumulated a lot of things. I don't know what to do with them. But still, I gather. I don't give it away. So, we will be judged in the air not on, the, on how much we have, but how much we gain. Not how much you have, but how much you gain. The way of holiness, Jesus tells us that that is our first priority. It has to be the part, it has to be the following him is more important than anything else. When that is our focus, we find out that we have everything that we really need and none of it came from worrying about it. My dear brothers and sisters, so keep in mind, focus your mind on God, on Jesus. And be happy that Jesus, God, takes care of us. That is what is our strength. If we can, you can have that strength and not to worry about anything, God will take care of it. You are on the right track to be happy. All of us should strive for that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.